handicapper steve here handicapping the racing from Belmont park here on saturday it is july the 7th 2018 i'm going to look at all the stakes races on today's program from Belmont. but before i get on to that remember to please follow me on twitter at horse racing kit 5 for more selections for race courses around the world and uh, join me in just less than two weeks time for the opening of saratoga you know all throughout the saratoga meeting i will have previews here on youtube so go check that out can't wait for the spa um you know that's in two weeks time but we still have racing at belmont and today's card from belmont is incredible you know it's very you know these races are very very hittable and i'm gonna look at all the stakes races races six through ten races six through ten and it's connected all those races in a naira Betts pick five and i will give you a ticket and if you didn't if you don't have a Naira Betts account, you better sign up for it because that's the only way outside New York State you could uh, bet this pick five. And I was, I'm not getting paid for this plug, but uh, you should really sign up for Naira Betts because uh, you could play the pick four for a takeout rate of 22%, something like that, or you could play the Naira Betts pick five with the takeout rate of 15%, which um, you better do. Um, you know, common sense. Which one are you going to play? Play the pick five. You better fucking do it. Um, so let's get on to it. Uh, we're just going to start race, race number six from Belmont. The uh, sixth race, it's the 101st running of the Dwyer, the grade three Dwyer, going for a purse of $300,000. This race is for three-year-olds here. The local prep race for the Jim Dandy coming up in about three, four weeks' time. Um, we have fields of seven horses in the Dwyer going the distance of ground of 1,600 meters or the distance of ground of one mile on uh, the Belmont main track. 1,600 meters, one mile. My top selection in this race, I like the number four horse, No Melindy. Going to go 4167 in the Superfecta. 4167 Super. Top selection of four horse, No Melindy. Um, 7 to 2, 3 0 Colts by Take Charge Indy. John Blasquez gets the leg up. Blinkers on today for the first time in. Uh, start. Most recently, this horse ran the 9th of June at Belmont. A mile and a half in the Belmont Stakes. This horse finished 10th by 54 lengths. Originally, it was said that this horse was going to go straight to lead. Mike Rapoli said the week of the race, this horse is going to press justify. He didn't. Javier Castellano uh, disobeyed uh, Mike and, um, you know, was never really into it and, um, you know, just, just couldn't keep up with them. Um, since that race, Javier Castellano is not riding for Mike Rapoli. Uh, since this that race, Mike Rapoli has bought out Windstar, who actually co-owned this horse, so now he's the full owner of this one, and, um, you know, hopefully uh, things are to change with this one. Um, but before that, Noble Indy ran the, in the Derby at Churchill, Mama Quarter, May the 5th, horse been 17th by 42 and a quarter lengths, was with the leaders early on, and then he just hit the wall, couldn't keep up with them there, and then the Louisiana Derby at the Fairgrounds, Valmond 8th, March 24th, horse won by neck that day, stalked early, after not so the best of starts, but, um, you know, got there in the end, he, he, he fought a good race there, um, and, and then before that, in the Risen Star, this horse finished third by two lengths, never really got it going didn't break all that well either but i think coming to a one turn mile it should be to this horse's liking um you know this horse does have some speed into it and you know just looking at him the way he runs one turn miles up this horse's alley at seven to two he's a horse you definitely want on your pick five ticket along with i think the one horse sea henge um for aiden o'brien and the coolmore group corn a big one and could upset in this one with javier castellano up he's carrying a little low weight of 115 pounds you know this horse most recently ran in the pat day mile at churchill uh sloppy going one mile may the fifth horse been seventh by 13 three quarter lengths had a little bit of a turn of foot at the end but it just wasn't enough to win it also was on a sloppy racetrack today you're going to see a fast racetrack sh which should really change dimensions with this horse you know if the, you know the, I, I like the r the riding booking of this one with castellano up you know they could have decided of getting another rider from europe to come over but um you know they're going with a local rider who knows belmont very well and i think he'll probably sit this horse a little bit closer than he normally sits uh in his regular races uh, to not get dirt in his face and i think he can maybe go away with it beating the stable mate mendelssohn who i think is going to get very bad into the ground if mendelssohn wins i'll you know i'll applaud him but um i think this one horse Seahenge is a uh, you know could run a big one also and this horse actually beat mendelssohn in the um 
in, in the fall, last fall, by um, by uh, winning the um, the Champagne Stakes at Doncaster. But um, be before the uh, Pat Day Mile, this horse ran the UAE Derby at Maidan, Mile 3, 16th, March 31st. Horse finished fifth by 26 lengths, then break all that well, and just never really showed up there. And then before that, in the Pat and Stakes in Dundalk, one mile, you know, this horse finished third by four and a half lengths. Again, didn't break all that well. The European horses don't really break that well in races, but um, hopefully if this horse breaks well and gets a little bit closer, I think this horse can win. The last win came in the Champagne Stakes at Doncaster, where this horse won by a neck. He had a decent turn of foot there, and, and he got there. Um, you know, I, I like this horse a lot. 15-1 horse you definitely want to use on your pick 5 ticket, I, and I would also use Mendelssohn also. I think he can run a big one, but he's going to be dead into the ground, I think. But to recap my selections for the 6th from Belmont, it's the 101st running of the Grade 3 Dwyer. Top selection here. I like the four horse Noble Indy. I'm going to go 4 1 6 7 in the Superfecta. I'll go 4 1 6 to start off the pick five. So now let's get on to race number seven from Belmont. Race number seven from Belmont. It's the 11th running of the Belmont Sprint Championship. It's a grade two race going for a purse of $350,000. This race is for three year olds and upwards. Field of six horses going the distance of ground of 1,400 meters with the distance of ground of seven furlongs on the Belmont main track. 1,400 meters, seven furlongs. Top selection in this race. I like the number six horse here. Favorable outcome. I'm gonna go six two one four in the superfecta. Six two one four super. Now to the multi race. Uh, pick five. I'll go six two in this one. I'm gonna go too deep. But my top selection six horse. Favorable outcome. Four to one. Javier Castellano is on this four year old colt by Flatter. Horse's most recent outing came the twelfth. Uh, excuse me, the seventeenth of May here at Belmont. Sloppy going. Six and a half runs an optional eighty claimer. This horse finished second by one and three quarter lengths that day. A little bit wide and he just couldn't get the kick on the uh, the winner recruiting ready who just ran a little bit better before that he ran in the Carter Handicap at Aqueduct 7 furlongs April the 7th horse finished 6 by 14 and a half lengths very wide that day and he just didn't show up it wasn't his day to win but this year's Carter Handicap the renewal was you know one of the best uh you know, wide open races we've had in years, and uh, it, it, it was very deep. It was a very good competition race. So it just can keep up, up with them. This race is not nearly as tough as the Carter, by the way. Um, and then before that, in the Gulfstream Park Sprint, horse finished six by seven lengths. Didn't have the best of starts and was a little bit wide. He just didn't show up on that very humid day in South Florida. And then before then, the Malibu, Source finished third by three lengths. He just couldn't get that good closing kick. But, you know, he, he hasn't run well in 2018, but he has the potential because in 20, you know, 2017, he ran some decent efforts. You know, he won a very nice race at Aqueduct. I wanted, you know, he, he, he ran third in race here last uh, fall, and then he won the Swale very nicely in early 2017. I think he's gonna he's due for a bounce back race, and here at four to one, I think he's gonna do it. He's been training very well at Saratoga training track, so watch out. Another horse I think can run a big one is two horse Whitmore, um, five year old gelding by Pleasantly Perfect. Uh, Ricardo Santana Jr. is on this one. This horse is most recent outing came out here at Belmont, six and a half in the True North on Belmont Stakes Day. This horse ran a very good second place finish by a neck. You know, he, he was a little bit wide in the stretch, but he, he was coming at the end. He, you know, he ran a decent effort there. Before then, the Churchill Downs of Churchill, seven furlongs, finished fourth by three and a quarter lengths, was farther back than he normally would be, and he just didn't get that good closing kick there. But before that, he won the Count Flute Sprint at Oaklawn very easily, and then he won the Hout Springs at Oaklawn very easily. He's due for a good run also. They've been trading well with Churchill. At 2-1, to one, I'll take my chances. A horse I'm not going to use, I'll use him my super factor for the underneath, but not to win is going to be the one horse, Limousine Liberal. He's a horse that loves Churchill. He's the horse, if I could get future rates wagering right now for the Breeders' Cup Sprint, I would put everything on it that I own, uh, you know, my net worth at the minute, which is a, probably about uh, 100 bucks. <laughs> you poor, poor college uh, kid problems. I know, you have to sit, pay off your student loans and crap, but um, you know, I would take my hundred bucks right now and bet it on him in the Breeders' Cup sprint for winning there. Since this year's Breeders' Cup is at Churchill, this horse loves running at Churchill, but outside Churchill, he doesn't run a drop. He didn't run that well in the uh, Met Mile. I, you know, he, he got third, but he, I think it was third out of default, but he did win the Churchill Downs before that, and he finished second in the Commonwealth, but like like I said, his races outside of Churchill haven't been very good. His New York races haven't been that good, but uh, 
um, you, you know, he's not a horse I would really use here to win. Um, but underneath Superfacta, the third, fourth, Trifecta, Superfacta, he's a horse you want to use there, but not, just not to win. He's not going to be used anywhere on my multis, so watch out. Um, so to recap my selections for the seventh race from Belmont, it's the 11th running of the Belmont Sprint Championship. As a top selection, I'm going to use the six horse favorable outcome, and hopefully it's a favorable outcome in my favor. I'm going to go 6 2 1 4 in the Superfecta. I'll go 6 2 in the pick five. So now let's get on to race number eight from Belmont. Race number eight from Belmont. It's the 40th running of the Belmont Oaks Invitational. It's a grade one race going for a purse of $1 million. This race is for uh, Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere Phillies, three year olds here, field of 10 horses going the distance of ground of 2,000 meters or the distance of ground of a mile and a quarter on the inner turf course. The rail's at zero feet, so they'll be running against a hedge here, which is good. These inner turf course races at Belmont tend to be more towards speed horses uh, or horses close to the front end. Um, I think uh, my top selection is that it fits that style. That's going to be the six horse, um, the six horse Athena, uh, or Athena, whatever her name is. I'm going to go 6175 in the Superfecta, 6175 Super. Um, to the um, uh, pick five here, I'm going to use the six horse in the pick five. I'll use the one horse significant form in the pick five, and um, and I'll probably use the seven horse La Sinar in the uh, pick five also. I'll go three deep uh three deep here if i would have some extra bankroll maybe i'll use the five horse but i don't want to go you know give you out a thousand dollar ticket I, I wouldn't feel you know very you know it, it i i want to i want to give out a ticket that i know i could personally bet with my bankroll um and not give you out some ludicrous amount of tickets but um i would go three deep here uh for sure um and maybe if i had the extra bankroll used to five but as a top selection the six horse athena i think she could run a big one coolmore owned here uh Ian o'brien sends us in from valley doyle um rotten moore gets the leg up on this one um you know this horse ran at uh, the cura last sad sad, sad oh, excuse me last when was it? When was the first? It was last Sunday. I was right. Uh, at the Cura, a mile and a quarter in the Pretty Poly Stakes. This horse finished third by five and a half lengths. And this horse, she just couldn't get that good closing kick that day. But she, she, she ran well. It wasn't a bad race. Um, the horse that finished in front of her forever together was actually the uh, English Oaks winner. Uh, but, it, you know, it was a deep field. But you're probably wondering... Oh my God! A horse run ran last Saturday, and she's running in America on six days rest. You know, Aiden O'Brien does this a lot in Europe, um, and uh, you know this horse probably gets the extra benefit uh, here in America running on six days rent rest because she's running with Lasix today, which is not. Per, uh, permitted in uh, Europe, and I think the Lasix really should help this horse. Also, it's a massive step down class from her last race. This might be a grade one in America, but a grade one in outside of America, basically in Europe, is is a group two there. So this is like you know her stepping down a whole class level to our company, and um, you know it should really she she should really run well. She's also getting the uh, the Bally Doyle's number one rider Ryan Moore up, which should really help. But this horse's most recent start before the Kerr race came at Royal Alaska. 21st of June, and the Group 2 Ribblesdale going a mile and a half. This horse finished fourth by eight lengths. She sat closer to the pace, and then she got overtaken by another uh, cool more horse, Magic Wand, who won that day. This horse just couldn't get, you know, couldn't keep up with them at the end. And then in just a maiden race of Fairy House, Monocore, May 31st, horse won by half length. Sat a little bit closer that day, got the lead, and then she took off clear. Very nice race. It took her a while to get her first victory, but she, other than that, you know, she, she ran great efforts, especially in mid-May, where she uh, ran a great race in Newberry, ran a great race at the Kerr again. Um, you know, the distance should be up to this horse's alley, sitting a little bit closer. 92, I think this horse should run a big one, so watch out. Um, I also think, um, you know, the number one horse here, significant form could run a big one. I ran her two juniors on this one for Chad Brown. This horse's most recent outing came in the local prep race for this race. The Wonder again at Belmont. I'm on the 8th, June the 7th. Horse finished second by length. It's that second most race, a little bit wide, and just couldn't catch the uh, the winner who's running back in this one. You know, she was second best off a little bit of a break. Before then, the winter memories of Aqueduct, mile 16th on the Widener, or the outer turf course there. This horse won, won by six and a quarter lengths on lead all throughout. 
Wow, this horse just had a very easy victory there. And then uh, it also was his first, his first start uh, off a layoff. Start before it became the 3rd of November at uh, Del Mar, one mile in the Breeze Cup Juvenile Flutes turf. With this horse finished fourth by two and a quarter lengths, stalked early, a little bit wide, and she just couldn't keep that good closing momentum at the end. Rushing Fall just ran a little bit of a better race. I like this horse a lot here today. I think she can get a piece of it also. So to recap my selections for the 8th from Belmont, it's the 40th running of the Grade 1 Belmont Oaks. As a top selection, I'm going to use the 6-horse Athenia. I'm going to go 6 one seven five in the Superfecta. I'll go 6 one, seven in my pick 5. So now let's get on to race number 9 from Belmont. Race number nine from Belmont. It's the 132nd running of the Suburban Handicap. Grade two per $700,000. It's for four-year-olds and upwards. Field of 11 horses going the distance of ground of 2,000 meters or the distance of ground of one mile and one quarter on the Belmont Big Sandy main track. 2,000 meters, a mile and a quarter. A distance not run very often at Belmont on the main track anymore. Um, it's quite sad, um, but hopefully in the next few years the stamina will be coming back and they'll be carting hopefully a mile and a quarter races on the main track again at Belmont. Um, great race here. It's uh, you know in years past the field size for this race has been quite low. This year, 11 horses. When I saw that, I'm like, oh shit, you know, really good. And it's a really good field this year, I must say. Um, as a top selection, I like the number eight horse Opportunity. I'm gonna go eight four two ten in the Superfecta. I'll go eight four two in the Pick Five. My um top selection here, the 8 horse opportunity 7 year old horse by any given Saturday Flavian Pratt is on this one for Bob Baffert this horse loves Belmont won the Ch uh, Jockey Club Gold Cup a few weeks here a few years ago here at Belmont and then won his last race here at Belmont the Brooklyn a few weeks ago by 2 and a quarter length just closing up well at the end um, you know before the Brooklyn he ran in the Al Shiva Churchill mile 16th May the 4th horse finished fourth by seven lengths that day you know he's a kind of horse he's a big horse and he had to be stopped and when horses that big get stopped it takes a lot of a momentum for him to get going and he just came a little bit too late at the end and then before then tokyo city cup at santa anita mile and a half april the 8th horse won by six and a half lengths sat back early got the lead then he took off clear very nice easy victory there he's a big horse that's that's built for belmont and um you know i, I like him a lot here today um you know at this distance he's eight and one but he's you know he's made 2.3 million dollars at this distance also um so um you know he, 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 you know, like I said, he, he likes running here at Belmont. I like him a lot. Um, you know, he, he, has, he has to overcome a little bit of the uh, bad post draw, but um, I, I'm confident he can. He's a, he's a veteran here. He's been training well. Watch out for him here today to run a big one. I think also another horse could run a big one is the four horse Taprit. Four year old Colt by Tapit. Jose Ortiz is on this one. This horse's most recent outing came at Belmont, a mile 16th, June the 3rd, an optional 80 claimer. This horse finished third by one quarter lengths by the, behind that horse by the name of Timeline, who I, I, who I believe is running um, t uh, yesterday, who ran yesterday at Belmont. Um, this horse that day hit the gate going out a little bit wide. He just couldn't excel. He definitely need the race. Before that, in the Travers last year at Saratoga, a mile and a quarter, this horse finished fourth by eight lengths, and he really just a little bit wide, just didn't have anything there. And then the Belmont last year, this horse won by two lengths. He sat back stalking early, got the lead, and he fought a great race to get the victory. Um, you know, he's the perfect kind of mile and a quarter horse here at Belmont, and, um, you know, I like him a lot. 7-2, he can run a big one. I think the two-horse war story can run a big one also. Um, you know, he is a good post draw here, and he also looks like he gets a little bit closer, which I think you might want to do also. Um, you know, his most recent out came in the Brooklyn, where he finished second two and a, by two and a quarter lengths behind Opportunity. Opportunity just had a little bit of a jump on this one from the Y post draw. Before then, Charlestown Classic, a Charlestown a mile and eighth. This horse finished second by a neck. He just missed at the end, but he ran a great effort there. And then the challenger at Tampa, he won by five and three quarter lengths, took off clear in the straightaway, a very easy victory. He's already earned a million bucks this year by finishing third in the, uh, or excuse me, um, well, by uh, by finishing second in the Charlestown Classic. And, um, you know, I, I just like his uh, chances a lot here today. Um, watch out for him to uh, run a big one. So to recap my bets for today's ninth race from Belmont, it's the... 132nd running of the Suburban Handicap. The Grade 2 Suburban Handicap is the top selection here. I like the number 8 horse opportunity. I'm going to go 
two eight four two ten in the super factor i'll go eight four two in my pick five so now let's get on to race number 10 from belmont the 10th race feature race of the afternoon it's the 69th running of the belmont derby grade one purse 1.2 million dollars it's for three rolls here field of nine horses going the distance of ground of 2,000 meters with the distance of ground of a mile and a quarter on the Belmont Inner Turf course. 2,000 meters, a mile and a quarter. Top selection here. I like the number three horse. Analyze it. I'm going to go three, four, nine, six in the Super Facta. Three, four, nine, six Super. Top selection, three horse. Analyze it. The Rio Colt by point of entry. Jose Ortiz is on this one. Sources most recent out came the 2nd of June here at Belmont. A mile and eighth inner turf course in the local prep, the group, the grade three Penine Ridge. First off, a little bit of a break. This horse finished second by a neck. He stalked early, a little bit wide, and he had a little bumping in the top of the lane, and he just couldn't get the jump on Catholic Cow. Uh, Catholic boy who just ran a little bit of a better race before that a key and then yielding going a mile 16th in transylvania this horse won by five and a quarter lengths from the wide post trust sat stalking early on then got the lead and then he just threw off drew off clear very nice easy victory and then before then Cecil B. DeVille Mile at Del Mar one mile November the 26th horse won by four and a quarter lengths almost on legal throughout a very easy victory this horse has a good post draw a good front running style for the Belmont in a turf course and I think here at five two not the best price I think he can run a big one another horse I think he can run a big one is the four horse hunting horn um three year colt by Camelot um Ryan Moore's on this one this horse is another one that could sit a little bit closer here he ran at Royal Ascot got a few weeks go a mile and a quarter in the Hampton Court. Swartz won by four and a half lengths that day. You know, he, he sat um, uh, stalking the leaders early on. He got the lead, and he, then he took off clear in the, at the end. A very nice victory for this horse. Before then, the preview jockey club at uh, Shanti, a mile five sixteenths on the 3rd of June. Swartz been six by two and a, and a quarter lengths that day. Was never really into it, and it just wasn't his day to win. And then the Chester Vaz at Chester, a mile and four and a half furlongs, uh, May, May the 9th. Horse finished third by three and a half lengths. Again, he just never really got that good closing kick. Um, you know, Chester is a place where you want to be close to the lead, and this horse there, he, he, he just didn't excel. Uh, before that, he ran the classic trial at Sandown, where he finished third by um, one and a quarter lengths. He, he ran a great effort there. He wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't a bad race. Um, I like him a lot here today. The firm ground should really suit this horse. Seven to two, watch out for him. He's, uh, I'll, I'll use both these horses in my pick five. So to recap my selection for the 10th from Belmont, it's the 6th to 9th running of the Belmont Derby. As a top selection, I'm going to use the three horse analyze it. I'm going to go 3, 4, 9, 6 in the Superfecta. I'll go 3, 4 to end off the pick five. If you've been following the pick five, I think it's going to cost about 54 bucks, somewhere around that area to play it, which I think is quite affordable uh, to some people. So um, go play that ticket, hopefully. Um, so um, good luck to all. Please follow me on Twitter at Horse Racing Kit 5.